Hello! Thank you for taking the time to watch this video of some of the features CAP has available for EPDM. There are four features I will be demonstrating in this series of videos. The first one is Bump Jump. Bump Jump adds the ability to bump or jump to another revision out of sequence. The second one is Dynamic Approval. This adds the ability to change the required approvers during an approval process without changing the workflow. Third, Auto Reject Notification. This adds the ability to automatically notify the originator of a document when it has been rejected in the approval process. And finally, an old one, email notification. This feature is similar to EPDM's dynamic email capability, but we just approached it in a slightly different manner. Bump Jump basically adds the ability to jump or bump to another revision out of sequence. Uh, it can be executed via transition or manually from a menu command. Some example uses. If you're importing files from an uncontrolled environment, uh, they may have a revision associated with them already, and you want to bring those in at that particular revision. Another example would be environments where revisions are controlled outside of EPDM. Um, this would be an example maybe uh, the revision is changed of a particular document uh, that's being used somewhere else. Uh, it doesn't necessarily reflect your copy or your version of it within your vault, but you need to keep it in sync with some other uh, system. Another option or another example to use would be controlling the revision in EPDM workflow uh, can make the workflow sometimes very complex. Uh, depending on your revision scheme, sometimes uh, the workflow development can be very complex. And uh, using Bump Jump will just simplify it a lot. First, Bump Jump. Okay, so let me begin by showing you the first example of importing files from an uncontrolled environment. Uh, you can see on the right here is my uh, view of my vault, and something we recommend uh, to our customers is they create an imported folder, in which case then you can create a uh, workflow associated with that imported folder to help kind of clean things up before you bring uh, foreign files into production. And then over on the left I have an example of three different files that, that I'm going to be bringing in. Um, now, normally, without any of the cap uh, bump jump features, the process of bringing in a file is, um, is not complicated. It's simply a drag and drop like you'd normally do. Uh, however, some of the information, of course, is missing. So we have to populate those by hand here. Save on that. And then go ahead and check that in. Now, of course, this is going to get checked in and not have any particular revision uh, associated with it. So the next process would be to increment the revisions and you can see it would go to Rev A and then of course I have to continue that all the way through to Rev D. Now maybe going to Rev D in one particular file isn't uh, too complicated of an issue but you can understand that if you had several hundred files this could take quite a bit of time. Furthermore you can see in the history here uh, you're basically saying that this is all Rev A, B, C, and D, which is not really what we want to convey uh, once we get the information in the ball. So we're going to delete this out, and we're going to be, and we're going to use the bump jump method. If I go ahead and drag this into the vault, I'm going to check this in, and now with a right click option, I have this ability here to say jump revision. When I jump revision it's going to recognize that this is a blank, there's nothing to jump to, so it's going to ask me to uh, give the, uh, the revision that I want to go to. I'm going to give it D, hit OK, and now with a quick little refresh you can see that it's automatically filled out D here, as well as in the history now it is that you know, it's jumped basically to rev, uh, revision D. Um, another example just some other features that we might have in here. If I'm going to drag and drop uh, this particular file in here, can you see no revisions here? This revision scheme, uh, the, the user actually typed it in wrong. It, it should be E with a uh, 01, uh, so the digit should be two, character, two digits. But if I go ahead and check this in, and even using my jump revision, I type in the wrong information, it recognizes that uh, that revision scheme that I'm trying to establish is supposed to have the, uh, those particular values. 
So you can see that it automatically uh, fills it in and, and correctly uh, evaluates it. Okay, the next example I'm going to show is another feature within the bomb gel called Promote. Now normally, um, if you're just doing an increment revision uh, on a particular file, it depends on how you have it established within your workflow as to what is going to be incremented. Um, in this particular case, you can see if I go to increment this, it's going to increment both uh, values in this revision scheme. But that may not necessarily be what I want to uh, um, do. So I would have to establish all kinds of different transitions to determine which ones I want to uh, uh, jump up. So with a promote, um, I can actually control this to say basically, you know, start from the right and work your way back this way. Um, if I do a, a promote, then I will jump just the right one, or just the right value, and you can see 03-01 worked out fine. Again, seeing it here. Um, if I go to a jump revision now, and I decide I don't want that, then I can type in the 04.00. And again, that will jump it to the correct revision value. So you can see there. Okay. Okay, so now the last example has to do with controlling the revisions. Uh, sometimes can make your workflow complex. Um, I have an example. Um, I have uh, two alpha scheme or alpha alpha scheme, and sometimes you might want to uh, increment just the left side, the left variable. Sometimes you might want to increment both of them, and sometimes you might want to increment one of them. Now this doesn't look too complicated as a workflow to begin with, but the real problem comes in if somebody makes a mistake and they increment both of them and they don't mean to then you're going to either have to roll it back or design some kind of method to adjust for one or the other. With bump jump, uh, we can control either one of them. With the alpha alpha revision example here, you can see I have this one is at alpha or revision AB. Now some people have a, a two-step revision scene like this simply because um, renaming the part number uh, actually can cost the company thousands and thousands of dollars in having to reprint documentation. So rather than create a new part number, even if the form fit or function changes, they change the revision scheme to, to, uh, to either reflect a major or minor change to a particular part. In this case, if I want to increment it to, say, BA, I can do a jump revision, type in the BA so that it basically increments up the left revision or the major revision and increments down the minor revision I can go ahead and type that in and again after a quick refresh I have my BA. <clears throat> I can also go ahead if for some reason um, the major revision needs to change as well as the minor revision I can do my jump revision type in CB and again both of them get changed uh, according to what needs to be done. Okay, Again, this could be, uh, to, to allow for this kind of flexibility, uh, it's very complicated through a transition uh, standpoint, uh, especially if you have to go back many particular revisions. Okay, so that concludes uh, basically the uh, examples that I had uh, planned. Uh, now, just to go over a few of the uh, specifications with Bump Jump. Um, basically, again, uh, uh, Bump Jump will run on uh, any component scheme, numbers, letters, lists, uh, whatever you decide. Uh, can be run manually or automatically uh, in a transition. Uh, access to the manual option can be controlled by permissions as well. Uh, you don't necessarily want everybody in the company to be able to do uh, manually jump revisions, so you can restrict it to uh, only certain individuals. And all options are set uh, with a virtual document card in the vault. The card looks uh, something like this. Basically, we create a, a card called Settings. And you can see we have uh, several different options and features uh, that help you control Bump Jump basically the way you want to control it.
Okay, uh, that's about all I have for the bump jump. Uh, so now on to dynamic approval.